In discussing the Arab-Israeli conflict, which is at the center of U.S. interests in the Middle East and has been for the last century, it's important to start with the Balfour Declaration. One of the treaties that was issued during World War I in order to fight the war was the Balfour Declaration. And it's important, it lays the, it lays the groundwork for understanding how the British dealt with the Jews in Palestine and how the international community has adjudicated the Arab-Israeli conflict. It's a very simple declaration. It was issued in November 2nd, 1917, by Sir Balfour, who was the foreign minister of Great Britain, to Lord Rothschild, a leading British uh, Jew who was a member of the Zionist World Organization. It reads, Dear Lord Rothschild, I have much pleasure in conveying to you on behalf of His Majesty's government the following declaration of sympathy with Jewish Zionist aspirations, which has been submitted to and approved by the cabinet. So here is the main paragraph, and it is one that is going to bedevil the legal environment of Israel and Palestine. It says, His Majesty's government view with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this object, it being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine or the rights and political status enjoyed by Jews in any other country. I should be grateful if you would bring this declaration to the knowledge of the Zionist Federation, signed by Lord Balfour. Now this very simple paragraph is jammed with ambiguity. If you were amongst the Jewish leaders of the Zionist Federation and you were trying to determine what does this mean for the Jews, you would quickly discover that it's full of ambiguity. For example, what is a Jewish homeland? It's certainly not a nation state. The Jews were not to govern the mandate of Palestine, which was going to be governed by the British. So what does national home mean? Perhaps it means you could go in as many and large numbers as you wanted to migrate from Europe to Palestine. Would you be able to assume authority over the country once the British leave? All those questions are left open. What you would be happy about is that it mentions the Jewish people and it men mentions a national home. So national and people are both used to describe Jews. And that is going to give the Jewish people a big leg up in the fight for legitimacy in the international community. Because if we look at how the Palestinians are referred to, in fact, we find much greater ambiguity. Because the, the, the key clause is the one that reads, it being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine. So how are the Arab Palestinians referred to? They're not referred to by name. They're referred to as the non-Jewish communities in Palestine. And this means that they're neither people nor are they Palestinians. They're not referred to like the Jewish people are as a people. Why is this important? We have to look at this in the context of the League of Nations, which was established by the help and the really under the authority of Woodrow Wilson at the end of World War I in order to set up a new system of international law to prevent colonies and great powers from gobbling up the territory of the world. Woodrow Wilson declared as part of his 14 points that was embodied in the League of Nations that all peoples had the right to self-determination. 
This was revolutionary. It gave hope to many of the smaller peoples of the world that they would be able to free themselves of colonial domination. But of course, in the language of all peoples have the right to self-determination. How do you get self-determination? How do you become a nation state? You have to be a people first. In the Balfour Declaration, it's written that the Jews are a people and they have a right to a national home. For the Palestinian Arabs, of course, they don't achieve this level of recognition. They're defined as non-Jewish communities and they have civil and religious rights. What does that mean? Of course, those are both very ambiguous terms. Civil rights are unclear. Religious rights means, of course, perhaps they can go to their mosques, they can pray or their churches for the Christian Palestinians, which, who made up about 10% of the population of Palestine. But they don't have political rights. They certainly don't have national rights. And this problem of a non-identity is going to bedevil the Palestinians right up to the modern day. We see that it's only around the 1967 war that the Palestinian community develops the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, that fights through terrorism and other means to try to get the world to recognize them as a Palestinian people. But nowhere in international law does the word Palestinian get written down until 1993 during the Oslo Accords when the United States, Israel, and the Palestinians sit down to talk peace. At that point, we get the first time that the Palestinians are recognized as a people. Previous to that, the Pal Palestinian Liberation Organization was seen as a terrorist organization. It was illegal for any American official to talk to a member of the Palestinian Liberation Organization. So it takes from 1917, when the Balfour Declaration was issued, until 1993, before the Palestinians are recognized in international law as a people who deserve the right to self-determination. And even then, they haven't arrived at their object of having a nation state. The Palestinian Authority that was established after Oslo Accords in the West Bank has been struggling to get national identity. The Americans and the Israelis see the Palestinian Authority and call it the Palestinian Authority, where the Palestinians call themselves the PNA, the Palestinian National Authority. They insert that word national in there because they want to achieve national rights. The United States and Israel are holding off giving that name to them until a final peace agreement is signed between Palestinians and Israelis, at which point they will achieve their national rights. But until, until that day, they remain only a Palestinian people with limited rights in the West Bank. And the conflict between Palestinians and Israelis continues. Those questions of identity are all embedded in this one little paragraph. For the Jews, it offered the hope of a national home and perhaps at the end of it, national independence. But before the Jews would achieve that, they would have to build up the institutions of a nation and finally go to war in 1948 in order to win and conquer the territory of Israel.